Hey everybody, here is a video on how to calculate probabilities for sampling distributions. So we're using the central limit theorem here. And so a couple of things to remember, I can only use the central limit theorem if my sample size n is at least 30, or if I'm told that the population is already normally distributed. And if that's true, that means that the mean for the sampling distribution is the same as the population mean, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay, so really the only big difference here is how we get our standard deviation. Everything else is gonna be pretty similar to the previous section. So let's look at our example. The mean height of men in the United States, ages 20 to 29, is 69.4 inches with a standard deviation of 2.9. So from that, I know my mean is 69.4, and the standard deviation is 2.9 for the population. A random sample of 60 men uh, in this group is selected, so I can fill in 60 over here in Excel. And we are being asked to calculate the probability that the mean height for the sample is greater than 70 inches, so that's this guy right here. And you can see I have an X bar over that because this is a sample uh, that I took and I wanna see the probability of that being greater than 70, the, the mean of that. So first I'll start by calculating the mean of the sampling distribution. Because my sample is greater than 30, uh, I know that the population mean will be the same. So I can just hit equals and borrow from that guy over there. Standard deviation, well, I gotta do a little more calculation for that. So I'm gonna start with the standard deviation for the population and divide that by the square root of the sample size. To do a square root, that's SQRT. You can see it come up there. And I'm just gonna use the sample. And there is the standard deviation for the sampling distribution. I am now ready to calculate this probability that they asked me to find. And it's uh, greater than, so actually the white piece right here is the part that I wanna calculate. So whenever it's greater than, I need to do the one minus in front because this normal distribution function will only give me that area in green on the left. So norm dot dist and my x value is 70, mean is 69.4, standard deviation 0.374 about, and one for true, for the cumulative function. And there is the probability that x bar is greater than 70. For the next part, part B, assume the heights are normally distributed. Okay, we actually didn't need that because the sampling was already greater than 30. Um, are, are you more likely to randomly select one man with a height less than 68 inches, or are you more likely to select a sample of 15 men with a mean height less than 68 inches? Okay, those are really similar to each other, so be careful. Um, the second one is a sample of 15. And oh, they changed my sample size. That's why I needed to know that the heights are normally distributed so that I could still use the central limit theorem. So that one is gonna be right here. That's the probability that X bar is less than 68 for a sample of 15. So I'm gonna change this to 15 since my sample size changed. And I'm not gonna worry about what happened here. I'm just gonna focus on this part B here. So I'm gonna do the same thing as before. This is a less than, so I don't need the one, one minus. So norm.dist and I'm gonna do 68. Mean, standard deviation, which is now different from the previous one, and one. So I got a probability of 0 0.0308 for that. Okay, and so the first one, which we kind of skipped over, um, probability that you randomly select one man with a height less than 68 inches. Well, that's back to what we were doing in the last section. I still get to use the same function. The only difference here 
is the standard deviation. The mean's the same each time. And now the standard deviation I'm going to use is the 2.9, the original one that wasn't for a sampling distribution. And you can see I get a different probability for this one, a much higher one, in fact. So that means I am much more likely just to select one person, one man with a height less than 68 inches, rather than get a whole sample of 15 with an average height of less than 68 inches, which actually, if I think about it, makes a lot of sense. And the last example for this one is if I want to do the inverse. So here I'm being asked to find the 95th percentile. And so I'm going to use that inverse function. So norm inverse is what I want. And this is back to the sampling distribution. So actually, I'm going to have to make some adjustments because I need to go back. I'm going to go back to that 60 uh, sample size that they originally gave me. So I'm, I'm going to do 0 0.95 for the 95th percentile, the mean. I'm going to grab this, but because of the way I set it up, I'm going to be able to just go and change it. So I'm going to change that back to 60, like part A. That fixes my standard deviation to what it was before. And I see that my uh, 95th percentile is 70.02 inches.